Hello civil engineers, welcome back to the lecture. Civil engineers, in this video we'll see uh, how the concreting work has to be done. Already we have understood, but again the methodology will try to understand. Okay, so I'll directly I'll take you to the methodology. First is for the plain cement concrete, which we call it as uh, PCC. Okay, first the grade of concrete to be used is as per the specification provided by the client. And usually for the PCC, we try to keep it as exactly M7.5 or M10, M15 sometimes. The layout of structure shall be marked as per the drawing. All the loose material must be removed from the surface where PCC is to be laid. We are done that. We are done the excavation. We'll do the proper ramming and then we'll put a, a layer of a PCC, which is around 75 or 100 mm thickness. Yeah. Uh, the bottom level of PCC must be checked and must be laid as per the specification. How you do that? Whatever is the excavation, if it is written 1.5 meter, we'll do 1.5 meter of excavation. And over that, we put a PCC bed. And whenever you put a PCC bed, you have to, do, with the help of auto level, we'll give a marking, right? You remember that. Yeah. The bottom level of PCC must be checked and must be laid as per the specification. Anti-termite treatment must be ensured as per the specification. Exactly. So like I mentioned, anti-treatment we can do in two ways. One is as soon as you do the excavation, you do an anti-termite anti treatment there. Or sometime what will happen once you reach to the plinth level, in the plinth level, you're going to do that, right? So there are two ways of doing that. So it will be written in the uh, BOQ or maybe client may be conveying that to you where exactly you want the anti-termite treatment to happen. Is it right from the beginning or at the plinth level? So right from the beginning is always good. That is the best way to do an anti termite treatment so that you are, you know, not allowing the white ant uh, to come. I mean, in, in the grassroot level itself, you are going to kill it. Okay. After laying of PCC, engineer in charge must check the top level of PCC. We know that if it is 75 mm, you keep auto level. With that, you see a reading, you take a benchmark, and we have seen that. Next, coming to reinforced cement concrete for foundation, footing, column, and slab, and beam. The methodology so described for reinforcement and formwork must be followed for RCC work. The consultant engineer must be not notified a day prior to the concrete pour. So has to give approval for the pour based on his formwork and reinforcement checking. Exactly, right? Like we had seen, if tomorrow I'm supposed to do the concreting work here, if tomorrow I'm supposed to do a concreting work, one day before, we'll give a pour card and we have to check everything here. Like whether the cover block is given or not, whether your needle vibrator will be ready or not, whether you have covered your reinforcement for the column or not. Okay, whatever the development you're supposed to give, whether it is clean or not, check the footing dimensions, the length, the breadth, the diagonal and all. Okay, we know all those things. Yeah, the source of supply of ready mix and grade of concrete needs to be ensured as per the specification so provided. Usually M20 is a minimum grade of concrete we are supposed to use. We'll get it ready. Uh, site lab with cube mount, slump cone, vibrator, etc. Uh, et must be arranged prior to the concreting operation. Polythene sheets or hazen cloth shall be arranged for proper curing. We know that, right? Site lab with cube, cube mold in the sense, before we do any concreting work in a bigger construction company, we have to do the uh, uh, slump cone test. Then we are supposed to do the cube testing. I mean, you have to fill the cube. Of course, the testing will happen after 7 or 28 days. And then uh, whenever you do the concreting vibrator, we already seen it in the picture that the vibrator is kept ready. And once this concreting is done, you have to make sure that you are doing a curing in a better way. Again, for the curing, I think uh, I'd shown you that. Yeah, curing we know. And yeah, I'll not show it again here. If it's possible, I'll show you. Yeah, these are the hazen cloth what, what you have put here so that you are going to do the proper curing. Okay, yeah. So uh, before concreting, all surface must be cleaned thoroughly and oil must be applied on all the shuttering or the formwork. Based on the quantity of concrete and site conditions, the method of concrete must be determined. It depends what kind of method you are going to adopt, whether you are going to bring in the long chute or you are going to pour it or how it is, or directly through a RMC truck, you are going to pour it or not. That you can decide on the size site. Concrete during and immediately after dis, uh, depositing shall be thoroughly compacted using mechanical vibration. The vibration, the vibration shall be of sufficient duration and intensity to compact thoroughly and shall not be compacted for long has to avoid the segregation, right? Whenever we do a lot of compaction with the help of needle vibrator, there's every chance your cement slurry may pass through the, uh, you know, joints of the formwork. And again, what will happen through that again, segregation is going to happen. So uh, you, you should make sure that you're using it for at least for, you know, uh, one minute or let us say 30 to 45 seconds. And at every interval, you'll use the needle vibrator. Concrete cover needs to be maintained as per the drawing during the casting operation. If it is a footing, we keep 50 mm. Uh, next is pouring height for column should not exceed 1.5 meter. We know because of the segregation, that is to prevent segregation. During night concreting, adequate illumination must be provided. Like I mentioned, whenever we do work uh, at the night time, 
bigger construction companies and all will be having all the lighting arrangements and all like in the cricket stadium or in the football stadium uh, the way they put those uh, uh, flood lights and all everything will be arranged on the side okay curing shall be started immediately after the initial set of concrete and finishing and continued for a minimum of 7 days right so usually 7 to 10 days is a good time to do a curing irrespective of what you are doing whether it is footing slab column or whatever 7 to 10 days is a minimum curing what we are supposed to do and why it has to be done because we know that in the first 7 to 10 days exactly your concrete is going to get, gain almost 67 to 70% of a strength that you can see it here see in the 7 days almost 67% of a strength will be gain so that is why the first 7 days of a curing is very important it is like your concrete is in icu okay yeah then of course uh, the responsibility is it, it remains same for all your work methodology coming to the checklist of the pcc so again we have seen the checklist for the pcc again it's written here is a method statement available these are the pre checks okay are the required tools and machineries available at the work location then the, at the time of process at the time of pcc are the polythene sheets spread is area clean before laying of pcc we have done that is a reference level transfer and mark we have mark all the level right what is the top level of your pcc all those things we have done okay yeah then now for the rmc truck okay this is for rmc uh, so whenever your transit mixer comes to the site for that this is a checklist what we have it's written here okay like date the chalan number grade of concrete at what time your transit mixer is coming what is the slump you got uh, and next after that pre check is the mixed design available and rmc quality has with the approved mixed design but if you are done m30 grade of concrete whether the same mixed design is happening or not next is is a desired cube mold available at the pouring place is the slump verified next is checks that how many cubes you have taken what is the strength you got at the end of 7 days what is the compressive strength you got at the end of 28 days okay and then this is the slum acceptance value what we have which i had already explained you and this is how we decide the grade of a concrete based on the exposure condition how much is the minimum cement you want if you are putting a mild exposure it has to be 300 minimum if it is very severe exposure 340 is a minimum uh, cement what you are supposed to have this is a maximum water cement ratio you can keep if if it, if you are putting your structure in a very severe condition you have to use minimum m35 grade of concrete and these are the references what we have according to the code book and this for the cementitious content if you are instead of uh, only cement if you are using silica uh, fly ash ggbs and all in what proportion or in what percentage you are supposed to use it is mentioned here okay then finally you are going to do this the checklist and this is a pour card what we have okay that is concrete temperature or again one more thing whenever you are pouring a concrete no you have to check the temperature also because 27 to 29 degree celsius is the ideal temperature what we can have so we need to see that also okay concrete grade what is the grade of that concrete what is the concrete volume what is the concrete volume estimated and what is actually you have brought Uh, next is after that all these are the pre checks is the slurry leakage test done through water jetting and plugged properly means wherever there is a form work you are going to do a kind of a slurry test by injecting water and all so that you get an idea whether there is slurry whether that water will pass through that or not okay are the designated labels for curing in place uh, whether the availability of water is ensured all these things are the pre checks what we have these are the process checks at the time of concreting okay Uh, is a safety work permit in place? Is the form of checklist signed and available? Then these are the, your MEP check, which will be done by mechanical, electrical, and plumbing people. This is your safety checklist. Okay, done. So in this way, and then this is concrete post checking. That is, once you pour the concrete, after that you are supposed to do the deshuttering. You are supposed to do the curing activity, right? So it's written here, curing method. How we are going to do? If it is for footing, what we do? We either can go with the spraying method, right? Spraying method, or with the hazen cloth. We spread a hazen cloth. Ponding we usually do it for the slab. Okay. Next is uh, curing start date. Today I casted the footing. Let us say so tomorrow I'll start the curing. So tomorrow's date I'm going to put. Then curing finish day usually seven to ten days will take seven days. Tomorrow if the date is twenty uh, eight from there seven days comes out to be August fifth. So I'll write August fifth here. Honeycombing, sand, streaks, air bubbles, coal joints. If it is there. Uh, if it if it comes then we have to write it here then we are going to uh, do a repair to that just in case if it comes okay yeah next is crack what is the nature of crack and if if any crack comes all those things you have to write it here any other defect like sagging bulging bulging and all happens when you are not properly fix the form work due to the concrete uh, putting that lateral pressure your shuttering may you know bulge in this way so if that happens you have to write it here then eccentricity verticality all these things then again of course m uh, mep checks and your safety checks will be done got it so in this way this was a complete uh, uh, checklist the pour card and the methodology for the concrete if you're working in this way uh, there's uh, there's no problem at all at the site and uh, you can do everything in a better way so, yeah 
So I hope you have enjoyed my lecture up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.